Okay, so here I have an arm. It's three pieces with the weapon. It's all in my root object. And I have an animator, which is automatically created whenever I s select my root object. And then I would choose Create New Clip. And I named this one Tutorial Arm 3. It would automatically add this animator component to my root object. And all of my objects inside, they only have sprite renderer components on them in the transform. First, let's go into adding curves. When you add a curve, normally through Unity, what it wants you to do is you click Add Curve, you choose the item you want, you want it to be a transform, and then you can add position. If you want to add rotation, you would then go back to your weapon, transform, and add rotation. And this is a very time-consuming process. Uh, so there's a, there is an easier way uh, without doing that, so I'm going to go ahead and remove those properties. You have to do them one at a time, apparently. Uh, you just select everything and always make your selections in the hierarchy, because if you don't and you select everything, you can select the camera, which is over here, and it's also a ridiculous size, it doesn't matter. Uh, and when you select things that are outside of your animation, it's going to deselect your animation view. So just try to select through here. Make sure your recording is on. Drag your playhead out here. It could be anywhere as long as it's not on zero. You drag it out. And then we rotate, move, and scale. And it'll add each property as if we were automatically keying it. Uh, and the, the reason why we pull it out here is because it stores whatever the initial pose was on zero. And then you can just go ahead and delete this extra keyframe by clicking the top. And now you have your first frame. So that is how you add curves. So now that we have our curves and we have our first frame, I'm just going to make a quick little jiggle animation. Not really a jiggle animation, but just a, something short. Uh, we'll come out to about here. I'm going to start with just the shoulder. I'm going to rotate that up. And then I'm going to do the weapon and hand. Ooh. This is the issue with uh, Unity's transformation. My guess is because it's reshaping the bounding box instead of moving with it, uh, rotating with it. So that's what makes the rotation terrible. I just want it to kind of be like that. Alright, that'll be fine. I'm not going to be using the scale uh, keys, but I figured I'd have them for whatever reason. So I'll have it go up. And then I'm going to select this top key and then you can press con hold control, press C to uh, copy and then you can come out and control V to paste and it'll paste every key that's under it. Like I could copy this one and bring it out and hit V and it would just copy the ones that were selected. <clears throat> so now I just have this wonky little animation where it's already slip sliding but it's there. So now that I have this animation, I'm going to go down here and select Curves. You don't see anything right now because I don't I haven't selected the property. They only show up when you select the property. So if I want to see the hand's position curves, that's what the hand is doing. If I want to see the shoulder position curves, that's what the shoulder is doing, which it's not moving, it's just sitting still. Uh, but the rotation on the shoulder is moving. And this is pretty much how curves work. It's pretty similar to Flash, except Flash just has one generic curve for all the movement and the difference with unity is it lets you control each individual axis if you wanted by simply dropping down the position uh, or rotation or scale whichever one you want so let's start with selecting all actually because I want this to ease in and out because right now it just kind of pops down and then jerks right back up. So what I'm going to do, and I'll explain this later, is I'm going to change this to flat. And this side also to flat. So now I have this nice smooth movement. And what that's doing, let's choose the hand and the Y axis, because Y is easy, much easier to visualize. What this means is Y, the Y axis is up and down X is left and right, and Z is to and from away from the camera. 
And let's see, if I move this playhead out here, the hand is moving up in that world space. Not by a lot, but we're also pretty zoomed into this curve. So if I zoom out, I can stretch this single key up, and you see as high as I move it, the hand moves with it. It's only moving. There you go. All right. So however high that curve goes is how high the arm goes. And we can use that to manipulate a lot of information. I mean, hopefully that gives you a good idea. Like, here's the X. The X is still in that vertical movement. But you got to think of it more as it's going to move left and right. Like that. The further up it goes, the further to the right. The further down it goes, the further to the left it goes. And we can use that to manipulate, uh, to, to force certain items to follow each other, such as that sword, where that sword doesn't stay in the hand right here. It slides underneath. We're going to fix that next. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of how the curve works, I'm going to try and give you an understanding of what each curve type does. Because you can select your curves and right click and earlier you saw me choose flat for the ones uh, at the beginning and end of the animation. Uh, well, auto, first of all, it's, it's a pretty good one to use by default because auto is going to try and automatically smooth that curve to fit the motion. If I made this linear on both tangents, tangents would be the left and right side of the, of the key, it's going to go straight into it and straight out. Free smooth gives you control <clears throat> of the smoothing. So if you want it to keep going up more to the right of the key, you could do that. But we don't really want to do that. Uh, if it's flat, you could just choose flat because it would have the same effect as auto, as you can see here, because it's the same distance and keys on the other side. But if I were to move, like you can see that auto curve is really stressing out. On the other sides and if I wanted to keep it like that if I wanted to make sure that the curve does not overshoot the key I would want to come in and I would want to choose either flat or free smooth they technically kind of do the same thing but flat automatically flattens it for you but at the same time it changes it to free smooth and that just means that you can now adjust it so maybe you did want one axis to go above the key but the other one you want it to just kind of go straight into it. That's how you control it. So next we have broken. So let's let's keep over here and we'll change this to broken. At first it looks like free smooth and flat. But what happens now, only one side of the keyframe is changing the curve. So you can have it do a pinch if you want on either direction. You could just manually control the curve if you want it to just kind of be close, but not quite uh, smooth. Then broken is the one for you. And this would be affecting the x-axis, because as you're going to see now, the weapon slides away out of the hand, whereas before, sliding too close. Yeah. So that's how Broken works. Broken lets you control each side of the curve uh, separately. Next we have the type of tangents. When you choose these, it kind of creates an automatic broken tangent. Because let's say I want the left side to be linear. Now on the left side of the key, it's going to come flying in straight. But on the right side, it's going to keep whatever I had it before, but it's going to be broken. So I could keep it smoothing, or I can just keep it flat, or I could mimic the pinch. And now that left and right movement's going to be very sharp. You can see it popping left and right up there. So let's let's go back to our auto. And now let's choose the left tangent to be constant. Well, now the, 
the weapon doesn't move. It rotates still because I'm not using the rotate curves. But the position, it's going to pop into place. And that's not too bad in quick movement, but it can get a little wonky, I've noticed, with Unity whenever you slow it down. Uh, so if you're not doing any slow motion, it's probably okay to use it. <clears throat> but that's how you get no movement to sudden movement. Since this is only happening to the position frame, the rotation still looks smooth in the beginning. But if I come down here to my rotation curve, I can select the left side of this tangent and switch that to constant. And now even the rotation won't move at first. It'll all just pop into place. And that's what that does. Um, not a whole lot of places you're going to use that, but it's there. The only other option is the free, which uh, pretty much just makes a broken tangent, period. As you can see, it just sets it to broken. So, changing any of these to free is the same thing. So now I've got my movement back to where it was. And next, we're going to use the curve editor to adjust the way that weapon slides around. Okay, so right now we have the weapon sliding into the palm and then back out. It's not too bad right now uh, because the movement's not as big, but if that arm came up even further, we would notice it a whole lot more. The way we're going to fix it is by only worrying about the red and green, which is the X and Y, because we don't need the Z axis. It's not going to move towards or away from the camera. If I only select these, I'm isolated to only these curves. And I can go ahead and just kind of get an idea of what's going on here. If I come out this far, I can see right here, it looks like it needs to come down a little and out a little. So I can just right click and add a key, and I can adjust that just by sliding it around. I can add this key and I can adjust that by sliding it around. It's going to automatically do it by free smooth. Sometimes it, it randomly decides, I don't think it's random, I'm pretty sure it just chooses based on what you chose last. I'm going to go ahead and choose auto and see what I get. Auto kind of gave me a weird result, so I think I am going to stick with that free smooth because that free smooth looks like it's doing a whole lot better. And now that I did that, I can pretty much copy and paste this guy out to, I think it was about 12 frames out, although I, I guess in this case it would be here. So now, oh, we do have something weird happening. Well, let's take a look at the curve, huh? Oh, look at that. What happened is, this free smooth is copied over here with the same direction of that tangent. So one thing I can do is I can just go ahead and drag the tangents down until it looks nice and smooth again. And now it looks pretty close all the way around. Even though the arm comes in a little bit, it's not as noticeable as the sword was, I think. So now we've got that. We've got a nice smooth movement. And next, we can go over doing like an, an overlap to the loop, to the looping animation. Okay, so I'm back into my dope sheet animation now. And I'm thinking I want the sword to have kind of like a, a lagging rotation so that it looks like it's being affected by physics. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to select this uh, rotation key property. What I'm going <clears> to <throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this rotation property for the weapon, and I'm actually just going to drag and select the keys, and I'm going to slide it out a little. And then when I come over to here, I'm going to go ahead and press K. K will make a keyframe for whatever property you have selected. And I only have this rotation key selected. So it's only making that key. And I can select that key and copy it and paste it back to the beginning. And then I can get rid of this key that I slid out. And I can already tell you it's not going to quite look right. 
you see it jiggling like that, it kind of pauses. And we can check our curves to find out why. I'm going to select only the Z rotation. And if you come in here, you can see right off the bat that that curve should be nice and smooth, but it's not. It jiggles, and that's creating our weird little effect. And you can kind of see that lead-in of the curve back here. Well, fortunately, this is a free smooth, so I can just go ahead and drag that handle down. And now when I come over here, I can see that change I made. It will make the changes in real time. You can see happening over to the right. As I change the curve, it actively lets me see. So now that I've done that, I can come over to this side and I can adjust this curve to look like it slides right into it. Maybe bring it a little further down. But now I have this nice offset. And if I hit play, now that sword looks like it's lagging behind. It's got more weight to it. And it's as easy as that. And that covers the Unity Curve Editor. I hope it helps you out. Let me know if you have questions. Thank you.